Thank you very much. Um, it's not often I say this, but I'm very honored to be here today, and especially on this date, uh, where 73 years ago, my father got his house back and my mother could play safely in the streets again. So I hope the same happens in your country as well soon. I, uh, I will find the presentation. Perhaps here. Let me know. You can see it. So the title, and I've forgotten I've written so much about <laughs> the content. Uh, so let's see if I can cover all of this. It sounded huge. <laughs> but hopefully I'll touch on some of the, the things. Um, I'm president of the Norwegian chapter of ICF. I've been that for three years. Um, and if the annual meeting on Thursday wants me to, I will be doing another year, but that's it. <laughs> I, it according to the rules, I can no longer be in the board of our organization. So we have a maximum of six years. Um, my, let me say a little bit my uh, personal journey. Uh, so uh, you could say I grew up in a factory. Uh, my father had two jobs. His second job was a managing director in this factory. Um, it was a, an area where you had big forests and I started running orienteering. And uh, my father was, uh, maybe not say stupid enough, but he, he bought me this album from of heavy metal rock and he probably he regretted it the next few years when I played all this uh, heavy metal music in this house. In, in our house. Um, there's a reason why I show these pictures and I'll connect to them also later. But let me say something about my professional career and coaching. I did see Tony Robbins uh, sometime in the 90s um, on television. And I, I still regret I didn't buy his uh, CDs or was it DVDs, I'm not sure. Uh, and tap into that uh, at that stage. But um, I came across coaching, uh, I think it was around 2000, I did a um, three day coaching course at Capgemini where I worked with the software, um, project management and test management. And I thought this was something for me because I found myself in situations not so interested in the technical side, but more on how are people working together, how do they connect, who is communicating well with whom, and etc. So I, after the training, I became some, you know, for a short while, uh, an internal coach for new people starting out in the company. And I also took what I've learned into sports. So I tra uh, trained or maybe more so coached uh, a few uh, good orienteers and ski orienteers and uh, amongst them, this guy who became world junior champion. My more professional uh, career uh, started in 2015 when I did the ACC and two years ago, almost I did the PCC. And the past five years, I've been quite active with coaching in organizations, both with leaders, but also with other talents. So let's see. These are some of the things I plan to talk about. Uh, and of course, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, and, and neither do any of us, but we, we can think and, and uh, suspect what is going to happen. Um, my presentation and our, what we're going to talk about is probably connected to my own story and where I am also in my career at the moment. But I would like to 
do a little check-in. It's always good that everyone talks in the first few minutes. So maybe we can make some breakout rooms, maybe pairs or trios for this one. And just check in, you know, what, what is happening in the current picture. And hopefully I, I don't need to change my whole presentation, but uh, in some, some way, just have a little bit feeling for what's going on. Uh, what are your views just at the moment? Can we, can we make that? Like for five minutes and then come back and, and just get some comments in the chat after that. So I think everyone should be back. And I could see some joining and some not in those rooms. I saw joining. There's a, this funny microphone that shows if there's activity or not. So I saw some lively discussions in some rooms. Maybe you could um, put some thoughts in the chat and um, just keywords. And we'll summarize them and maybe if I could get some help to also to read uh, if, if it's happening fast, that'd be good. Colleagi, delete the of chat, if you We need some minutes uh, to, to share in our chat with all sorts, so we need to wait. Sorry, was that for me? Yes, everything is okay. Um, I'm saying that uh, we need some time uh, to uh, uh, to write uh, all thoughts in chat. So yeah. let some time for our colleagues. Absolutely. I see, for instance, nothing can replace live communication, even online. Class changes need to be ready for everything. Mm -hmm. Колеги, якщо хтось хоче голосом, щоб було швидше, можете брати мікрофон. Okay, one room. There was some sharing of, of experience from chat GPD. Yeah. Interesting and new. Thank you. New world, new challenges. Mm -hmm. This is the time when coaching is redefining itself in the changing world, yeah. And I'm thinking about the time, Alina. I know we started a little bit late. I don't know what what's the absolute closing time for me. Is it half past or a few minutes after? I think we can continue. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, just move things around on the screen. 
So just introducing my, uh, my experiences from this, the, the IT, my IT past. I think um, this is about 40 years ago uh, and I'm now revealing, almost revealing my age. But uh, in the eighties, I, at the start of my studies, I did mechanical engineering and uh, the particular college was um, or technical high school was quite in the forefront when it came to to IT or data as it was called back then. So we did a bit of programming and CNC machines and so on. Um, our lecturer in the programming uh, lessons, he mentioned quite early a guy called David. Uh, we haven't met David, but he said that David has this machine and probably, you know, next week or in a couple of weeks, we will go to the big computer and we will see him demonstrating that we can talk to it and we get answers back. So the weeks went by, we never you know, saw David, we got an excuse, no, he's not here, or it's not actually ready yet. So it took a while, but in my two years at the, this, this place, uh, we never saw David. So um, I don't know what happened, but of course now we've come much further. And you mentioned that one of the breakout rooms had made some experiences. I have not made many experiences, but I can tell you or show you one or two examples that I tried and um, my reasoning also behind this. So the uh, first one I tried uh, was typical coaching session, you know, how a coaching session could start. And there's a lot of text, but don't worry about the text. I'm, I'm just, taking the big picture here. So I think at the start, at the top, it says, I'm feeling a bit sad, yeah. And then, you know, chat, I, I can never tell whether it's GPT or GTP. <laughs> it's saying, you know, sorry to hear that, what's bothering you? It's my team. Okay, I feel they're not making an effort. That's quite usual in a coaching session with a team leader or, or a manager. So some suggestions are being made uh, and on the next page, um, I'm, I'm saying I, I've tried, but they just won't listen. So what, what is happening here? So I get some ex uh, suggestions again. And then in the last page, I, or, or after that, I get, you know, if this continues, then maybe it's necessary to consider other options, transferring to a different team or department. I don't know if they say I should transfer or transfer the team members. Maybe it's me. So, you know, I thought, hmm, this is a bit tough. Maybe we should try again. So I tried again and I got an error message and I tried another time, another error message. So I was stuck there. It never gave me. Um, a solution. So I thought thought it was a bit drastic, uh, but I didn't give up just yet. One of my reflections was that, and I've seen some videos of, on YouTube that people tr trying to educate the chat and finding, you know, describing what you want. But my my experience is saying, and I'll show you it later, that this didn't change much. And I think often, you know, in coaching or almost always, we never have the whole story when we start. So we cannot go straight in. We have to find, you know, what's the underlying, etc. So I tried, tried a couple of other times and I made it a bit personal. So my second attempt is connected to some of the picture, pictures you've seen before, my taste in music. 
So I, I tried a different start, you know, coach me now. And this, this is a case I've used over 10 years, you know, with people who are training to become coaches. And I say, I want to play organ, but there's a big story behind it. It's not me wanting to play organ. It's the, it's, it's the main topic. Uh, there's something else. And some coaches find it, some don't. You know, I, I have many different results from the coaching. So the first reaction is, okay, find an organ, take lessons, blah, blah. And I'm being a bit tough to, to the chat and saying, this is not relevant to me. And it apologizes. Yeah, that's nice. Provide more information. I have a Hammond. Okay, you have an organ. Okay, familiarize yourself with the Hammond, you know, and uh, learn basic techniques, practice playing, etc. Join a community. And then I'm a bit disappointed. So I say, you call this coaching? <laughs> and um, yeah, I get a response for this. And, you know, I try to nuance it a bit. You know, I want to be my, like my hero. And actually, yeah, there's some general ex uh, answers. And they're really good information about um, him. Study his style, etc. Performing live, yeah, that would be great. No one will listen to me, I think, but anyway. So uh, I think there's one more page and it gets actually a little bit deeper. You know, because I provide a bit more information as a special bootleg album saying called Live in Aachen. Uh, and there's some faults here because it says you'll need a Hammond. I just told, you know, I have a Hammond. But, and I put that into writing. I, I told you I have a Hammond. And then actually it comes up with the settings of the the keyboard, etc. So for practical purposes, this can make me um, play like him uh, on this level. Um, but, but I couldn't resist saying giving all these replies is not coaching. So that was my first attempt on this uh, topic. Then we had a board meeting in Norway and one of the board uh, members said, well, I had an argument, you know, I was fed up with the, the, my husband's behavior. So I went to chat GPT and tried something and I instructed it specifically to use the ICF uh, way of coaching. And actually she said it even more specified than that, uh, using ICF, but also the school that she had gone to. And it was really good, she said. You know, there was some uh, really good coaching there. So, okay, I tried again. So I, I started like this. And the first thing that happens is <laughs> they're telling me all about the core competencies and the ethical standards. Okay, so I'm a bit restless. Can we start? Yes, we can start. I want to play organ. Okay, so there's a whole project plan. What to do? Uh, oh, yes, one thing I didn't mention. I thought it was really good that, please note, <laughs> just a language model. And please consult a certified coach. I, th I think that was a good thing because then there's a distinction between giving all these advices and actually talking to, to somebody. Okay, the attempt wasn't, I wasn't too happy with it. Um, it looked more like a project plan. Uh, actually, the previous attempt I felt was better for me. But this, I understand, you know, explore, re find resources, set goals. There were so many questions I thought, uh, yeah, on the previous page, I don't know where to start. So they, they put all this and then I say, I meant, you know, there are too many questions. Where do I start? You know, this is too confusing for me. And there's a whole new set of questions. 
So I wasn't too happy with that. So my previous attempt where I started without the ICF uh, instruction actually got me further than uh, this on my path. Uh, what I was missing here, because this is all very technical, is why do I want to do this? You know, what's lying underneath? And, and, and maybe it's possible. I'll love to hear from you the, to, to get there, but my attempt uh, actually totally failed in so in this regard. So I'm not, let's see the timing. Uh, I think maybe we'll, we'll stay here in, in this room. I think that could be smart because of the timing. Uh, but maybe we can do a small, um, just, for, just for fun. Uh, let's uh, start up this. Um, have you used the Mentimeter so far? Maybe we can uh, try that. And uh, for those who haven't used it, go to menti.com and I'll give you the code on the next page. So my, my question is simple. Will AI replace us? Yes, no, or maybe in a few years. And I will see, let me know from you now that, you know, if this works or not, uh, I will. If not, I'll have to press a button somewhere. Are you able to put in your answer? It's 17581420. Oh. Okay, I see something happening on my screen and then I'll share that screen in a moment. I have one answer so far. Okay, so answer starting to get through. And whilst you're um, voting, I see only seven. I don't know if there's a tech problem or something. But whilst you're trying to vote, um, thank you to, I think it says Anna here. I cannot read totally, but um, seems that chat GT, GPT also didn't notice the emotional changes of the client. Uh, good point in, in my examples. So uh, yeah, can you repeat? Uh, can you repeat? Uh, yes, yes, we see already. Okay. Ah, you see the um, you see the results now, or the presentation, Alina? Do you see the results? You see the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's um, stop this one and I'll just share presentation. It's not a big surprise. Uh, share the results, by the way. No one so far has voted for yes. <clears throat> so clear majority on the no for those votes who have come in.
whilst you're still walking, I'll just give some of my personal thoughts on this. Um, you know, I, he I heard about this 40 years ago with this guy called David, who we never saw. Maybe it's was just imaginary person. Uh, I think there should be more advances by now. Um, I mean, in all areas. At work, okay, we have this chat, but what else? Um, yes, at home, we have these gadgets, you know, we can talk to and tell us stuff. I haven't installed it yet. I'm a bit uh, worried about the safety and who can listen in, um, as I know many others are. Um, and then I'm wondering in the shops, why are we queuing? You know, we go to the pharmacy. Should be enough, you know, to press some button and the type of medicine we need should already be ready somehow. So I'm questioning how far this can go. I, I would have wanted or I would have liked to see a lot more happening by now. So that's just my personal thought. Now, I will do a short uh, let me find my Zoom window um, there. Back to the presentation. So you saw the results, still majority on the no side. Uh, I cannot show it here because this is just uh, the presentation that I already showed you. So 10 to, what's the score now? 10 to 3. 10, 3 and 0 is the score at the moment. I'll do just a short, maybe it can be a cool addition to our work, not the coaching itself. Yeah, I agree. I'll just do a short um, thing on this, on standards, because that's something we are working on in Norway at the moment, and we have been for many years. So uh, you are probably also aware of the confusion of coaching. What is it? Is it about career? Is it about well-being, life, all of the above? You know, what about mentoring, therapy, etc.? There's so many types. People have real difficulties uh, finding out what to choose, where to go to training, etc. And then we have the imposters. So maybe this has happened in your part of the world as well. Um, these are in Norwegian, so it's hard to understand, but you see there's coaching online, uh, feel manipulated, uh, paying 10,000 euros to, to become a coach. And uh, there's more about meditation and hallelujah. And this other guy, so, so she, she was actually uh, trying to train she was not running one of these places and on the uh, on the right this guy has earned two and a half million euros in three years uh, doing online uh, co so-called coaching schools but uh, when they dug a little deeper it was not really even close to what ICF is doing. So my short point here is uh, we have been working on a standard in Norway. We started the project across uh, different um, federations. There are not that many in Norway, but you know, we got the ICF, the EMCC, Gestalt, etc. Um, and then we have a local um, Norwegian coaching federation, mainly NLP based. So the process was started before I became president. Um, they've been going at it for more than three years. Uh, I've been part of it for the past half year um, due to changes. And it's really taken a long time, uh, and it's been a struggle between the different uh, federations. 
Um, and we don't know where it's going, but I think there's a definite need for standardization in the market. Um, and you got the EU charter to the right, which has been kind of revived. Um, we, we are in the process now where we don't know what's gonna, you know, be important for the next few years. Is it the Norwegian standard? Is it the EU charter? Uh, I think the main battle is not whether it's this or that, it's more about educating the market. And that's a huge job. And we are in the midst of it. Uh, and we, you know, we cannot do enough. Uh, there's so many to be educated. Um, I think that is the toughest uh, job. I'm going to cut this a little bit short. Um, but one element I'd like to conclude with is something about the major maturity on the, of the, the coaching business. It's quite young. In Norway, 60% of the members that we have in Norway say, I want to live from coaching. But 60% of them again are struggling. So everyone is what we call cooking their own cake. They're pushing, you know, and they see, not everyone, but many see others as competitors and not cooperators. So there's a fight in the market, uh, there's bad mouthing, etc. So if you call one coaching school, you know, finding out about them, I'm not sa saying this is about ICF, but there could be uh, a lot of bickering between the different directions and different schools. And I think it grows down to the market. And educating the market is also important. I'm going to conclude and say it's it's going to grow. Uh, I, hopefully that will take some pressure off. But we have a big job to do that. Okay. I think we'll go to the last section. So I, I'll call this one online platforms and neoliberalism. And we, you know, we know in the world that the 1% is getting richer. You know, the richest 1% is getting richer. The poor are getting poorer. <clears throat> and what about the middle class, which is basically us? Um, it used to be so that, you know, 50, 100 years ago, one parent, mainly the man, was working, the other one was at home. Now, or often, both are working, and both are working more than 100%. And there's a reason for that. And that's often the case that we are being explored or the people we coach are being explored. I saw this documentary on television a while back, and this guy who used to work for McKinsey or one of the other consultancies, he says, well, I've been part of it. It's simple math. You know, if you, if you have three people working, you pay each of them salary. If you have two people that work a little bit more, maybe up to 150%, you save a lot of money even if you pay overtime or some other expenses. So, uh, and I find myself in a kind of dilemma, both positive and negative, when I, you know, 90% of the people I coach, uh, we do something on time management. So I'm actually, I'm helping them, but I'm actually also helping this idea of exploiting uh, people. And you know about the inflation now and uh, interests are going up. I saw the latest now three, yeah, that should have been the picture. Three point uh, twenty five percent here. Brazil has got thirteen percent interest rate. So there's a lot going on. And what is happening in the job market? 
saw the statistics yesterday. That's locally. Reason for changing job, higher salary is now on the move up. Used to be fourth. Now it has passed, you know, the actual content of the work. So that's also a sign. You've probably noticed that there are some online platforms around, and this really took off in the COVID period. Here are some of the usual suspects, you know, two of the biggest ones and some of the other ones, and there are tens of more, you know, I don't know, maybe hundred more. So I just put some of them here. Uh, and they're all different. They all have the best idea. But I think there's a trend now from going to, let's say, one platform has a 36 minute format, which is the right thing to do. Uh, I think the trend is that we as coaches can do more what we like. So we're not so trapped into systems as we used to be. I'm active on several platforms myself, so I know a bit about the trend and I have been for a few years. So we, we're getting more free from the systems, but that's a little bit uh, sidestep from, um, from this point. Let me see. Um, yeah. I know the, the cost of living is a little bit different um, from Scandinavia to Eastern Europe. Um, but in, and I don't know what the, the prices are, you know, the, the fees that are paid. But typically, uh, I've heard around 100 euros per hour. And if you work, say, 40 minutes, it's two thirds of that, or 45 minutes, you're paid 75 euros. With the cost of living in our country, um, yeah, it could be tough to, to live on that. So I, I, I'd just like to do a quick experiment with you. And here's the first one. And there's a, a new mentee. Three, five, two, five, oh, three, six, four. Maybe you could put it in the chat, Aline. I have two questions. Uh, this is the first one. Let's get that one first. Let me maneuver my screen. Just waiting for my screen to update the menti. But maybe you have the possibility to already enter your results. So we're just doing a local poll and try to make sense of it in terms of how this looks uh, in your neck of the woods. So I think it should be ready now. I think we have one. So it, it produces kind of a word, word cloud, but now in, in numbers. If it works the way I thought, but maybe it doesn't. Okay, so someone, all right, yeah. I have at least three results, maybe a few more. So what I have so far is 40, 50, 60. And I, I'm assuming this is in euros. Yeah. 
Maybe we can go to the second question. I think it should be ready, but let me see. No, that's too far. How many coaching sessions is suitable per day? I'm thinking in terms of uh, your own time, but also focusing properly on the client. Let me know if that question is not coming up on the Menti. It should be the second question. Someone is saying, can't see it. Okay. And I get to answer in the chat instead. Yeah, that's also okay. Just to get an idea. I don't see the result on the second one, so maybe it's not coming through. It looks like, yeah, all the way from five to down to two. Most have answered three. Right. So... And now I have a disclaimer for my next slide. This is the um, one example. It says 20,004, but I'll stop that and I'll just show you my Excel sheet instead. I tried to incorporate your numbers. Should be there. It's an old version, but I got my own buttons that I use. So maybe you see it. So if if we say 40,000 was the invoicing <clears throat> per year as a goal, and three is the number of sessions per day, if my calculations are right, then with let's say 40 weeks a year where you're working active, not doing seminars, uh, other things. I know this is a constructed uh, situation, but just to get an overview. There should be something like 40, um, sorry. Um, I think maybe I'm, I'm missing something. And what is it? I combined two spreadsheets yesterday <laughs> to get this into one screen. Um, yes, so if you have 40,003 per session per day, that's the number per month and week five that should be 15 there was um an error here yesterday sorry about that i will see if i can rectify it there it should be yeah so that's more correct says per year 600 hourly price invoiced something like 33 euros and 24 the actual pay if you take away social costs, uh, pension, etc. I will not, uh, so that's, you know, based on what you told me, that's my result here. 
So I'm not going to say if it's right or wrong, and you can please enter the chat if you see, uh, yeah, four days a week, yeah, if you see something wrong. But uh, if I take my case in Norway, with, with the prices that I mentioned to you, uh, that has been offered to new coaches, uh, sorry, coaches, uh, not these numbers that I show now. I think that's uh, not relevant. But um, the bottom line is we, we cannot live, you know, solely from uh, online coaching platforms with the prices that I see now. Maybe some manage to make a better deal, but I hear what new coaches, I mean, coaches who are new to platforms, what they are offered, and they're usually even lower than what I mentioned. So we kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, commodifying our service this way. And what happens then? And this gets to my conclusion. If if it continues the way it does, then some of the good coaches from the platforms will tap out. They will stop doing it. And I know some who have. And maybe these platforms are seen as a space for beginners, you know, to gain hours, for instance, towards the ACC or PCC or what it might be. One solution is to adjust the pay from the online providers. And I'm now talking about just the providers, not what you set up yourself, you know, because when you set it up yourself online, you can charge whatever you want. I haven't seen many signs of that so far. So I think we're not rid of the selling yet. I think we need to acquire, you know, our own clients, set our own prices, etc but maybe do it more on a value-based period invoicing type. And one also solution is combined coaching with training and or consulting. And it's, you know, I, I put this partly because I do it. And I think it's a nice change from the coaching to go out in the world and see, you know, run a change project, see what's happening, uh, work with trainings, uh, it's a different format and they, they complement each other. So I think that's still going to be valid. With variation. Finally, and we're almost on time. 20 years ago, I, when I said goodbye to the IT world, I was told by my then mentor that coaching is the new thing. It will grow the most of all the services. And I think still that is the case today, uh, especially when the new generations, uh, they want the coach, they even expect to be offered a coach. So maybe they are the, the educated ones, not, not my generation. So I think the future looks good, just needing some uh, adjustments. And maybe, I don't think AI is gonna take a job soon. So I think it's promising, uh, we just need to manage it uh, ourselves. And that's you know, partly the reason why we have our federation and our cooperations between countries. So, that's what I wanted to say. I don't know if there's anything in the chat that we want to um, to comment on. Yeah, four days a week and low price. Um, if you want to reach me, here's an uh, email address and LinkedIn uh, and our page in Norway. I also like to mention that I've been the co-author of a couple of books 
from Springer. Uh, if you want to take a look, uh, the third one came out uh, last year. Um, and I wish the best to you. Uh, and thank you for being here. And thank you for the attention. And Slava Ukraini. <laughs> Thank you, Hiroem Slava. Thank you, Jan. Thanks for your amazing uh, uh, AI research uh, that uh, you shared with um, information about the situation of your market right now, uh, prices uh, with uh, coaching uh, training schools. Uh, it's really um, uh, valuable because uh, uh, I think that we have similar situation, uh, one nature of this market. So we are developing also, and I would like to return to the first question, uh, a coach or AI, and I have my uh, own reflection that um, uh, I'm sure that the machine will hardly replace a person uh, because machine is about the cognitive part, uh, about the mental part. In coaching, we develop physical and emotional intelligence. Uh, we learn to feel and uh, machine cannot feel uh, therefore we have an advantage a big advantage yes a coach has the uh, ability to feel and helps the client to uh, learn how to feel yes so yeah. this is value of the coaching we provide to our clients uh, the development of the individual's potential is about working with emotions first of all yeah. so we have uh, big advantage and uh, people first and after ai i think <laughs> thank you thank yeah, you totally agree thank you thank you for your time thank you uh, joined us and i wish you all the best uh, during uh, international coaching week in your country and to all the world thank you thank you yeah we have our conference on thursday a live one so for the first time in five years okay okay so uh, i wish you uh, uh, good luck with your conference with your thank you very much all the best to all of you Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.